Are you looking for a video that's going to teach you everything you need to know to color correct and color grade videos in Premiere Pro? You have come to the right place. Hey guys, I'm Saurav, welcome to my channel. As I said, I'm going to talk about color correction and color grading in Premiere Pro in this particular video. In this video, I'm going to discuss each and every tool in detail with examples and color grade all the videos from scratch without using any LUTs. At the end of this video, you will learn everything you need to know to color grade your videos and make them look better. I'm super excited. This is going to be a long in-depth tutorial. So without wasting any time, let's get started. First thing, I'm using the latest version of Premiere Pro. I'm in the color tab and I have my Lumetri scopes open. For this video, I'm going to use Waveform Luma, RGB Parade and Vector Scopes. Now talking about color grading videos, it is exactly like color grading photos. A video is just photos being played one after the other. So when it comes to color grading videos, don't think of it as something different. For example, this is the first video. I'm going to pause at this moment I'm going to start making adjustments just like if this was a photo. I don't make my adjustments on the actual footage. I use a separate adjustment layer on top of the videos and I will explain later why I do that. For now, let me put the adjustment layer on top of all the videos. When you're editing any video, don't directly start color grading them. There are two important steps that you should do before you start color grading and they are correcting exposure and correcting colors. Let's talk about correcting exposure. This video was shot in log format with the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. And that's the reason it looks so flat. With the help of the tone panel in the basic correction tab, we are going to fix that. We are going to increase the contrast by adjusting all the sliders except the contrast slider. Because when you're adjusting the contrast slider, you don't get the flexibility of adjusting the contrast in highlights and in shadows. Contrast is nothing but the difference between highlights and shadows. If you want to increase the contrast, just increase the highlights and decrease the shadows, increasing the difference between them and you have better contrast. Now while making exposure adjustments, you have to make sure you don't overexpose or underexpose any important detail of your video. For that, we are going to use waveform. Let's increase the exposure. At what point do we start losing details? To understand that, we have to understand what these numbers actually mean. The important range for us is from 0 to 100. 0 is complete blacks, 100 is complete whites. The middle section are the midtones, let's say 50. As you go below 50, you go towards the shadows. As you go above 50, you go towards the highlights. If you touch 100, the highlights have become whites and they are overexposed. Similarly, if you touch 0, the shadows have become blacks and the shadows are underexposed. For this one, I'm fine with some of my extreme shadows to be complete black but not too much that I start losing details in my important shadows. Same for the highlights. In this panel, you're going to fix the exposure, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. You can also adjust the contrast but as I said, I don't use the contrast slider. I slightly use a different method that I'll show you in some time. I have made certain adjustments to this video as you saw before. Now I can just drag this adjustment layer to the next video which was shot at the same place just after some time. Now I don't have to make those adjustments again. The reason this looks dark was because the light changed between the two shots and the camera settings were constant. So I can make fine adjustments on top of this layer to even out the exposure. Using adjustment layer just makes the whole editing process a lot easier. Now this was exposure correction. Let's talk about color correction. Color correction is about getting accurate colors. Color grading on the other hand is about changing the colors to get a specific look. Before you start color grading, it's very important to get the accurate colors. One thing to keep in mind while color correcting is that the skin tones should look natural. Now for this video, the skin tones are a bit warmer. So I will make the overall white balance a bit cooler and get a neutral look. If you have a whitish object in your video, you can use the picker option, select the object and then you can see automatically the temperature and the tint gets adjusted. Again, this might not give you the most accurate results but this is a good starting point. If you want to warm it up, you can increase the temperature. If you want to cool it down, you can decrease the temperature. Talking about the tint, tint is used to add greens or magentas in your video. So with the help of temperature and tint, you have corrected the colors and you have accurate colors. 
So overall, the basic tab dealt with corrections. Now finally, let's start color grading. In the creatives tab, you can add the faded filmic look. I don't use this option even if I want to use a faded look. I use curves for that. I'll show you how to do it later. The sharpening option is a good option if you want to sharpen the edges. I only use this option when I want to sharpen the whole video. In this case, I would like the textures to pop a bit more. So I will use a bit of sharpening. Make sure you don't overdo it, otherwise it will look fake. Talking about vibrance and saturation, both increase the intensity of the colors. But I prefer using vibrance because it gives a much more natural look than saturation. If you focus on the vector scopes, when I increase the saturation, certain colors are getting affected more than the other colors. But when I increase the vibrance, all the colors are getting evenly affected and that gives you a much more natural look. If I want to reduce the intensity of the colors, then I use the saturation slider. The next option is shadow tint and highlight tint. This option is very similar to the split toning panel in Lightroom. Basically, you can add two different color tint, one for highlights and one for shadows. By default, the balance is at zero. If you use a negative balance, the color highlights will start affecting the image more. If you use a positive balance, the color shadows will affect the image more. By more, I mean it will also start affecting midtones. You don't get an option to select a separate color for midtones here. I'll talk about the curves panel later, but let's quickly see the color wheels first. Here, you do get an option to select a separate color for midtones, and that is why I prefer using this tool. Color wheels is a very fast and easy way to add colors to your highlights, midtones and shadows separately and get a unique look. You also get these sliders to adjust shadows, midtones and highlights just like you did in the basic correction tab. Now finally, let's talk about curves. According to me, the curves is the most powerful editing tool. You will see why. In Premiere Pro, you have two types of curves, RGB curves and hue saturation curves. Let's talk about RGB curves first. There are four curves as you can see. The first one is the exposure curve which deals with obviously exposure and the other three curves deals with red, green and blue respectively. I have an in-depth video on how tone curves work. I would highly recommend you to watch that video. But for now, understand that when you go from left to right, you're going from blacks, shadows, midtones, highlights and whites. So now if I place a point in the midtones and I raise the curve, I'm increasing the exposure just like I would do in the basic tab. I can increase the shadows, the highlights, whites and blacks separately. If you want to crush down the blacks, just move the black point to the right side. If you want to crush down the whites, just move the white point to the left side. Similarly what we saw in the basic tab. The reason I prefer using curves is you get a lot of control. Now for example, this is a S curve which helps to increase the contrast because as I said, Contrast is nothing but the difference between highlights and shadows. So we are increasing the highlights and we are decreasing the shadows and you see a S curve which is used to add contrast. So I can use different points for highlights, shadows, midtones and just with simple adjustments you can see there is a drastic difference. If you want to add a faded look, just raise the black point and there you have it. One thing to remember is when you are adjusting the contrast, make sure you are also paying attention to the waveforms and you're making sure you're not overexposing or underexposing anything. One thing to keep in mind is when you're adjusting the contrast, the saturation also gets affected. So here, I'm just going to decrease the saturation a bit and there you have it. Just with one curve, it already looks so much better. But this is just the start. You have three more curves, red, green and blue. These color curves work in the similar manner as the exposure curve, but this adjusts the colors. If you want to increase the reds in the highlights, just go to the highlights, increase the reds. If you want to increase the greens, you can do the same. You can also reduce the greens by just taking the curve down. You can add or remove color as you want with the help of these points. Remember this cheat sheet when you're using the color curves. When you're reducing blue, you're adding yellow. When you're reducing green, you're adding magenta. When you're reducing red, you're adding turquoise. This will be very helpful to adjust the colors. Now, let me reduce the reds and the greens. As you can see, the overall video has more blue color. The reason behind that is very simple. The blue curve is more prominent than red and green. 
It's very simple. Once you understand the basics of tone curves, the whole process of color grading is going to be very simple. The reason I love using curves as I said before is you can set any number of points and more the points more is the flexibility. If I have less time, I can use curves, in few minutes I have a better looking result. If I have more time, I can add more points and fine tune everything that I want to. The next type of curves we have is hue saturation curves. This is a very helpful tool and it will help you to make targeted adjustments. The adjustments that we made till now are global adjustments, meaning it's affecting the whole video. Now we are going to focus on targeted adjustments that is just going to affect a particular part of the video. Let's understand how the hue saturation curves work. You have X versus Y. You can make points or use the marker tool to set points in X and adjust the Y. Still did not understand? See this. The first one is hue versus saturation. So hue is color and saturation is the intensity of the color. When you're setting points, you're selecting a particular color. When you're adjusting, you're changing the intensity of the color. Similarly, if I want to change the color, I will use hue versus hue. So I'm selecting a color because X is hue, but since Y is also hue, adjusting the points will also change the color. You want to change the brightness of the color, use hue versus luma because luma means brightness. Again, you have a lot of curves, but hope you get the point. This is a great tool for targeted adjustments. The next tool we are going to see takes targeted adjustments to a next level. In the HSL secondary, you have three divisions, key, refine and corrections. Let's see them one by one. Key is used to make a selection. You can just use the picker option, click on a part and that is selected. Very simple, right? A part is selected based on the hue, saturation and luminance of it. You can manually make the adjustments and everything you see except grey is being selected. You can also add or subtract something from the selection with these picker options. I really like this particular feature in Premiere Pro. Just with the help of these picker options and certain manual adjustments, I can make some really good selections. But now it's time to refine those selections. For refining the selection, you can use denoise and blur. Once you're happy with the selection, all the adjustments you make will only affect the selected portion. So if I reduce the saturation, it will only affect the saturation of the selected portion. It is one of my favorite tools because it is so easy but it is so powerful. Now one more feature in Premiere Pro that I absolutely love is masking. Let me show you what I mean. This is going to take selective adjustments to a very very high level. Instead of using a separate adjustment layer, we will add a separate Lumetri color adjustment to the same adjustment layer. Now you can mask a particular area, meaning you can select a particular area. You can either use the Bezier tool and draw the shape manually like the pen tool in Photoshop or you can use the polygon tool as well. For this example, I am going to use the ellipse tool. I want to only select the face, so I will adjust the ellipse. Once I have a rough selection, I will just increase the feather slightly so the final effect will look natural. Suppose for this one, we want to increase the highlights on the face and decrease the saturation a bit. Everything inside the mask will get affected. If you want everything outside the mask to get affected, just select the inverted option. Now as you can see, the subject is moving but the mask is not. To fix that, just go to the start of the video, adjust the ellipse if needed and click on track selected mask forward. What this will do is track the selection from the start to the end as it moves forward. It actually does a pretty good job. As you can see, as I tilted the head, the ellipse also gets tilted the same way. Doing this manually would not be very difficult but it would be very time consuming. This is by far my favorite feature of Premiere Pro. The last is vignette. Very simple. Adding vignette is adding dark corners that brings the attention to the center part of the frame. You can adjust the midpoint, roundness and feather to change the shape of the vignette and sometimes it's a nice addition at the end. So as you saw, there are a lot of tools in Lumetri color panel of Premiere Pro. And for every video, you don't have to use all these options. 
But it's good to experiment and practice with all these options when you're learning how to color grade and then later you can decide which tools you want to use for a particular video. That's it from this video guys. I know it was a long in-depth tutorial but I'm sure it helped you and if it did press the like button. If you want more Premiere Pro tutorials let me know in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel. I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.